How do you choose an air purifier for allergies? Hi, my name is Peter Mann with Aronsi, and today we're going to talk about the sources of allergies and what to look for in an air purifier so you can breathe your best. Now, allergies um, generally are from three main sources. One is uh, pollen, the second is dust, and the third is mold. And so if we talk about pollen for a second, um, pollen refers to seasonal allergies, and that's, you know, driven by something that's blooming outside. And, you know, things bloom at certain times of the year. And so if you're <clears throat> in the springtime, typically those are tree allergens. When you get to late summer into the fall, those are ragweed allergens. And then there's some regional um, things that bloom. For example, in Texas in January, there's the juniper trees that bloom. They refer to those as cedar trees and call it cedar fever because it is really intense. And then there's grasses that bloom. And those are mostly a problem in the southern states, and that can be year-round. Um, you know, there's certain times of the year in certain areas where it's stronger than other times, but, you, you know, if you're in Florida, you can have grasses um, almost year-round. The second one is dust, and dust is really an interesting one because that is, is here all the time. But in the northern states, um, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years with, you know, air purifiers, and Every January or December, you know, there's there's typically a spike in sales of air purifiers in the northern states, and that's because people turn on their heating systems and just the dust kind of <laughs> that's been accumulating blows out. Um, and then, you know, that's always been kind of an interesting one, you know, to see. Um, but dust is one that's just, you know, year-round and, you know, there's no seasonality to that, obviously. And mold is the third one. You know, and mold typically requires a water source. And so if you can maintain uh, humidity levels below 50%, and if you can, you know, eliminate any sources of leaks, you really should be able to contain mold. But if you do have a mold issue, you can have mold spores, and that's where an air purifier can come in and help. And now all of these things that I've talked about are particles. And so, you know, the pollen in the air, the dust in the air, the mold spores, those are all particles. And what you need to remove particles with an air purifier is simply a HEPA filter. Um, you know, if the filter is rated as a high efficiency filter, it'll capture all of those things as it passes through. And then the key is, well, does it move enough air for my space? And that's really the key to getting an effective air purifier is A, is to have a HEPA filter, and B, does it move enough air? And to move enough air is simply just follow the two-thirds rule. And what that means is you take the square footage of your room, times it by two-thirds, and that gives you the CADR, which is basically an air cleaning metric for the volume of clean air that the air purifier can produce. And so if you have a 300 square foot room, you want an air purifier with at least a 200 CADR. Um, and the CADR really needs to be in CFM if you have it in cubic meters per hour, which I see occasionally from time to time, that really inflates the CADR number and it's not going to give you the volume of airflow that you think you're getting. That's more of an Asian and European metric. Um, you know, the U.S., I guess we, we never fully adopted the metric system. Um, and so everything that we're doing is in cubic feet per minute. Um, which is also based on the square feet of, of the space. And so it's in, it's in our um, you know, units. And so we have to be consistent in how we do it. Otherwise you'll be buying something that you think it does more than it does. Um, and that's really the, the key to that. If you have higher ceilings, you would adjust for that. So this is based on an eight foot ceiling. If you have a 10 foot ceiling, you may want to adjust the numbers by 20%. Um, but that's, that's really it. Um, when you're talking about mold, you may also have you know, gases or VOCs that get emitted. And then in that case, you also want um, some carbon. So this is our mod series filter. It has obviously HEPA material. Um, and then on the inside, there's activated carbon, which is, which is effective for VOCs. And so if you're looking for mold, you don't want, probably want more than just um, a HEPA filter. I mean, a HEPA filter definitely will capture the mold spores, but if you have the, the gases that are associated with mold, um, it, you know, it's probably better to go with one that's a hybrid with a HEPA and a, and a carbon. Um, but in general, for allergies, you really just need HEPA. Um, carbon's not going to do anything for any of the pollen, the dust, or the mold spores. 
um, themselves. It's, it's really designed more for gases and VOCs, which is not related at all to those allergens. And so um, any questions, please, please drop a comment and we'll be happy to answer. Thank you.